Annie, this is Torin, and we're turning this lifeboat into a liveaboard. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're starting to paint, but first a final few touch-ups on the hull. There were lots of holes to fill, you've seen a lot of them before, but here Torin's laying the last little bits of fiberglass, sanding them and getting everything watertight so that we are ready to start laying on barrier coat and bottom paint. So this is a two-part replacement for fairing compound? Yes, it's a pre-mixed fairing compound. I don't know why these two are such similar colors. Yeah, that's similar. A lot of them, they're like green and blue. We use the fairing compound to fill in any final low spots. Sorry. And then with all that sanding done and after a quick bath, it was finally time <laughs> yeah. to paint. I was so excited for this because I knew it would finally make that big visual difference I'd been craving. So this is a two-part epoxy barrier coat, right? Yes. So we're using Interlux Interprotect. It comes in two colors, so we've put the gray on already. This coat will be white, and then we'll do gray again, and then white again, and then we'll do the bottom paint. So this is the, uh, the base with the solids in it, the microplates, and then this is the conductor stuff that's effectively the hardener. So we have to mix it together and wait 20 minutes before we start applying it. But because later we'll have to get these jack stands moved, which are all down oops, all down the side of the boat. So we'll have kind of some holes, let me show you. So we're gonna have these gaps all along the boat and then also where the hull is sitting right on the bottom. So we need to save a little bit of this so that we can use it at the end without having a whole gallon just for these tiny parts. So we've worked out how much it'll, it's going to take and we're going to mix in this bucket a specific amount for this coat. It's all Oops. separated. Yeah. And we have to mix it. Now that it's mixed, we have to try and measure three parts to one part, or just glob it in. Well, we're gonna glob it in to begin with, and then... Very thick. So you're just saving one cup's worth from each batch? I was going to. Okay. But we have to save them separately because as soon as the hardener and that mix, then after 20 minutes the chemical reaction starts. So we can't just keep it saved in a gallon tin because that would be way too easy. Yeah. Any idea what the microplates are? Not really. Hmm. Why are we putting this stuff on? To help keep water from ever reaching the hull. So it'll keep us away from having blisters? Yeah. I'll walk you down to show you some blisters before we leave today. <laughs> Our poor friend in the boatyard has a real real blister problem that was also treated very badly and now he's got a lot to fix. So this is a pretty extreme version of what we are trying to avoid. So this boat got fiberglass blisters which the poor owner paid somebody to grind out and fill and they way overground them and then filled them with fairing compound and just generally treated it really badly so he's having to scrape all the way back and he's gonna have to lay new glass 
and fix the hull, but if you can avoid getting blisters at all, which a little tiny blister is fine, but big huge pock marks like this are obviously not good for your hull. So we're trying to avoid that by putting on all of the layers of Interprotect and hopefully that means we won't look like we had moonscape chicken pox on our hull. Back inside, it was time to continue framing in the freck. So we're adding more structure to what you've seen in previous episodes. If you don't know, this is an outside foredeck that we've added to Luya. And also just by nature of where it is, it's also framing in the uh, roof or ceiling of our bedroom. There's yet more framing to what you're about to see, but just to give you context, the very front of this, in front of those two by fours, that's our anchor locker, then the bed, and then the living space. Once the previous coat had dried outside, break time for building was over and it was back to mixing more Interprotect. I think around this time, I was probably starting to lose my mojo a little bit. You can see it's a lot of repeated process here but it was making a big difference and I know it's really important for the future. So I'm glad we did it and I'm also really glad that we never have to do it again. This um, two-part epoxy barrier coat is something that we shouldn't need to replace or really not replace too often at all. It's not like when you haul out and you need to do new bottom paint, that's the next layer. So you'll see that coming up, but this uh, epoxy barrier coat I think is like a one and done. At least that's what I'm hoping. So don't disabuse me of that notion. Torin will know what we need to do, but I am really happy with the idea that this was it for this part of the process. Next up, we needed to decide where to put our water line. That was a bit of a guessing game for us because while we had seen Luya in the water and we knew where she sat totally empty, we also know that we'll be adding a lot of weight and where she was sitting totally empty is not where she wants to sit for her hull design. Remember, we're trying to replace the weight of 60 people here, about 10,000 pounds. We're not gonna get quite that far. We're trying to balance between that weight that she's certified for uh, or designed for, I'm sure she's certified to carry more if she absolutely had to, but designed for that weight versus being efficient. So here we are trying to figure out where we're gonna put at least our temporary water line. So far we've been measuring 16 inches down from the lip where the hulls are attached together and then we're coming down onto the gray that much and making a mark which we will tape in a minute. We're basing that off some photos we have of her coming over to us and her water line at that point. We don't really know where the front water line is, so we're measuring from the distance from the ground up to where the water line is, and we'll use that height as a way to measure the curve around the bow. Right? Yeah, well, we figured out what angle the boat's on, too, so we know that the bow needs to be at 74 inches from the, from the ground, so we'll figure out that. Yes, because they didn't drop us in flat, so the inside is a bit of a marble rolling situation at this point. Yeah, we're on about a two degree angle. <laughs> Luckily, you generally can't see both sides of the water line at once, so. This is a temporary water line. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be perfect. Maybe. Stranger things have happened.
All right, so we've painted the last coat of two-part uh, two epoxy barrier coat with our imaginary waterline, or our total guess of a waterline. And now we're going to mix the first coat of actual bottom paint. So we're using this uh, Interlex bottom coat. This one is kind of more of a hard, semi-permanent bottom paint. And then tomorrow we'll be putting our ablative bottom coat on top of this, which will be black, and that will be our final bottom coat product. It was very blue. We said we were done the bottom job, but really we were done the bottom job except for these patches where the stands were before. So we've been moved over by the boatyard and now we've got six or seven little chunkies that we need to fix. So today's job will be sanding them down while well, this loud plane goes overhead. And then over the next weekend, we'll be adding on the six layers of paint that we've already put on the rest of this uh, bottom onto these. So then we'll be completely done our bottom paint, hopefully by the end of next week. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, just taking off any high spots with rough sandpaper and then... Uh... So like you can see here, we got a little bit of dribbles. I just need to cut in and apologize for how terrible the camera work is in this episode. I got a new camera with like a half inch screen and I hope I get better at driving it in future episodes. Real paint job, we have a nice smooth surface. All right, what are you doing? Our rudder post to the nozzle. So just put some butyl tape down. Now we're just attaching together. Doesn't need to be actually waterproof, really, but. So generally speaking, our plan with all the metal that goes below the boat and in the water was to redo what they did, but just to clean it all up, acid etch it, paint some epoxy barrier coat on it. You can see lots of that on this piece here, and then reinstall it exactly the same way they had. So we're putting Sigaflex on first as a glue and a sealant? A sealant, or... Well, and I guess a glue. We're just doing what they did when they built the boat. So, I'm going to grab 
the uh, sick of bikes. So what is this thing? This is what our rudder goes into. And then uh, in here is where our um, rudder gland goes. So is this inside the boat or outside the boat? Uh, this shoves up through the bottom of the boat and attaches to a piece that's inside the boat. Ah, that you just scraped off. That I just scraped off. I'm gonna push one through. You'll have to screw the nut on at the top. Good enough. A little messy, but fine. Getting to this reassembly stage was nice, as again, it really looked like we were starting to make progress and getting ready to get back in the water. It was also a little nerve-wracking though because, of course, no matter how much Sikaflex and how many bolts we installed here, you're always sort of wondering if we're just going to fall apart as soon as we hit the water. We were also just constantly checking for little holes on the hull. There had been so many when we bought the boat from various attachments and we actually almost missed one. It was filled hours before launch. The next thing we're going to do is fill these with thickened epoxy so they are little holes that we have quite a few of used to attach the uh, rings that the string would, would have been on that held our big tarp down. So we'll drill them out, we'll tape them from the inside, and then we'll fill them with thickened epoxy from the outside and just make them little plugs. And that's about it for this episode. In the next one, we'll continue painting. You see there's some topside paint. We'll be getting that on and prepping to go back in the water. So thank you so much for following along today and always, and we'll see you soon. Have a good day.